Hello and welcome to the latest episode of the Atheist Alliance International Podcast. I'm your host, Jason Sylvester. Just before we get started, I'd like to remind everyone to please like and subscribe. Today we are joined by a Lithuanian activist and a human enterprise activist. And so her name is Urte, and she's here to talk about her organization and the issues, the social issues, issues that she's facing in Lithuania. So Urte, thank you and, and welcome. Hello, uh, and thank you very much. Hi. You're welcome. So why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself and, and the organization uh, that you run? Yes, so I'm Urte Zhukovskaita Zabuke, and I call myself humanist and a social entrepreneur. So I'm running my um, social enterprise um, from 2016, and we co-founded an organization from uh, two, uh, 2020. Um, currently, we are working with uh, humanist ceremonies mainly. So, so like, like a wedding ceremonies, humanist wedding ceremonies, and presumably other funerals as well? Yes, so everything started in 2016 when um, I was young and I was in love and I, I needed marriage. And at the time, I didn't feel a discriminated group at all. I was living, you know, in Europe, in a free country, in a democratic country, and I didn't feel that there is a lack of something. Uh, but when I started to organize my wedding, I understood that there is no option for secular people, uh, that the only option we have is religious or the civil option, which is very, very strict and, um, um, and um, closed and short. Um, so yeah, I started Googling and, and I found this option of humanism uh, and humanist ceremonies online. Um, it was super strange because I found it uh, in Poland, uh, which is more conservative than Lithuania. And I thought like, wait a minute, they can do this and we can't, uh, we should do this. And um, my friend and actress, uh, she conducted the wedding. Uh, and later on, we co-founded uh, a wedding uh, ceremonies together because we got a lot of feedback, not only from atheists, but from the believers that this was very connecting that this was somebody said that there was God and I thought okay everyone sees what they want to see even though John Lennon was playing on, on, on the background uh, and uh, and I understood that it's a connecting experience for all life stances and all beliefs okay so um, the, the, you wanted you wanted something a little more than just the a, a civic ceremony and like a, a signing you wanted more of a ceremony. Yes. Yes, uh, it started from my need, my personal need. Uh, but when we suggested it for the public, uh, we first of all suggested it as, uh, as a campaign. We said, like, we didn't want to have a social enterprise or business or whatever. We wanted to say to people, look, that's a possible option. Do it yourself. And people started asking us to do it. Uh, and that's how it rolled over. Uh, currently, we conducted from 2016 more than 1,000 ceremonies, uh, which might sound a little bit uh, f uh, not, not too much, but we are 3 million people in all country, uh, from which 74% are uh, Catholics. And uh, the number 1,000 puts us in the second place uh, in the marriage um, ceremonies after the Catholic Church which makes us the biggest minority in Lithuania. Interesting. And all that in just a couple of years. So, Yes. So what, uh, what, was there anything special about the humanist ceremony that like a, a very special element that, that you brought to it that uh, was more resonating with people? I or think it's just this not, aspect of connection. Um, personalization for sure and uh, of course Lithuanians are very much connected to nature uh, until Christians came we were pagans so uh, we are still very much into the nature uh, into um, 
and I think all Europeans actually, uh, they find the leisure activities in nature most relaxing. Um, and um, it gave opportunity to have a wedding anywhere, um, but uh, also it let us to understood the concept of the ceremony that it can be for anything for for baby naming for funeral for baby loss for uh, for for connecting with uh, with the daily life actually and uh, why we call ourselves not uh, just a ceremony provider but a social enterprise uh, because we managed to create a system um, which would be um how to say um systemized uh to to have a creative approach to each ceremony the result each is different but we have the similar approach to the creation process because there was no celebrants we had to select them we had to train them we had to introduce the mindset to them because the word humanism was not there uh and 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 the philosophy of humanism wasn't, uh, secular humanism wasn't spread in Lithuania. So through these ceremonies, we spread the example of uh, everyone's involvement. And uh, in 2018, uh, we had a first naming and it was also from the need because uh, we, we didn't think about doing a naming. Uh, but uh, there were two women who were raising a baby boy and they wanted to celebrate him um, arriving in the family. And uh, the church, of course, they, they denied uh, the baptism uh, because the two mothers. And uh, they, uh, we were the only option. Um, that's how the baby namings were, uh, the ceremonies of baby namings came up. Uh, and in 2020, we started with the funeral ceremonies. And when we started with the funeral, we understood that, oh, it's not enough only the ceremony. Because with the wedding, there is plenty of time to prepare everything else. But with the funeral, you have to go to the funeral houses, which in Lithuania, are part of them are owned by the church, meaning that they have crosses and angels and, and all the symbolic stuff on the walls. Uh, and part of them, even though as they are secular, um, the tradition of the religious um, funeral is so strong that they also have plenty of religious symbols and all the goods are uh, dedicated to the religious minority. And when I started digging in this problem, it's not only in funeral, many social services are dedicated to the religious minority, uh, majority. Uh, and until you don't need it, you don't understand it. But when you, somebody needs anonymous alcoholics, we understand that it's a 12-step program involving um, God in it. And uh, for example, the only hospice we have, and that's very good that we have it, that's, that's uh, at least one we have, uh, but the only one we have is uh, Christian hospice. And, and so much uh, more services uh, are uh, only for the religious majority. I don't blame anyone uh, for that, but I took responsibility and I speak about this responsibility that if we want to have the services for ourselves, we need to create, some, create them. We need to do that ourselves. So it's not like the, the, the services or the not the services, but the ceremonies and things were banned by the state. There was just nobody doing it before. You had the religious option yes. and you had the civic option and just no yes. one had stepped into that and you've done that. Okay. And so what what are the demographics like in the country? I know around the world we're seeing, you know, humanism, secularism is is, is the fastest growing demographic in many countries. Is, is mm -hmm. it the same there or is the Catholic Church still have a, a pretty strong hold on the, on the people? That's the funny thing, because uh, even though we had a um, census last year, uh, according to it, 74% are Catholic, uh, around 5% are atheists, and 15 more percent are like something, you know. Uh, we don't know either. They, are, they, they, they say that they are not, not belonging to religious group, but they are somehow spiritual and, and so on. Um, the problem is, that this is what census shows. 
the actual numbers, for example, of marriages shows that there are 20,000 marriages happening each year. Out of them, 8,000 are Christian Catholic, which is much lower than 74%. And uh, because there was no advertisement of the importance of the census uh, and the importance of writing who you truly are uh, on the census, uh, and, and and the uh, communication on that you can write that you are non-believer and that's okay as well. Uh, I think a lot of people put themselves as uh, Christians only because of tradition and it doesn't correspond to the real view. Uh, and even though they have Christian values in so many ways, they are not identified with the religion and with the institution. So the census, the demographic shows that 74% uh, are Christians. There are uh, other minorities like Orthodox. We have like uh, only 2% of, of uh, uh, Muslim, but the, they are uh, Muslims from the old Lithuanian times, uh, uh, <coughs> Karayims. Uh, and uh, and uh, we, we don't have actually all um, big religious minorities. We have one big religion and the minorities are very small. So we can, we don't have problem not taking care of them. Okay. And so is, so is the Catholic church losing a lot of its influence in the country as uh, I presume fewer and fewer people are going to church. Some churches may be closing. Is it the same situation there as we're seeing in other parts of Europe and, and the West? Um, yes and no. Uh, yes, because, um, of course, people are becoming more uh, institution attached. Uh, but no, because uh, we were so uh, many years oppressed by the Soviet regime, which made atheism as a national religion. And uh, I say religion because it was. They were building science museums. They were having uh, must-have lectures on, on uh, why the religion is bad. And even though they didn't ban re the religions, but you were banned from all the public service if you were religious or you were caught to be religious. So it might sound as an atheist dream, but in reality, there was one thing lacking, which is freedom. And when there is no freedom, atheism can be the, um, the religion to control the masses as well, if it's used in an instrumentalized way. And that's why I think that for, uh, for organizations like ours, the democracy in the, and transparency is the most important thing. So I say no, uh, the, the church is not uh, separated from the, uh, from the uh, country because the first contract we signed after we got independence was the contract with Vatican. And it, it gives uh, the, the partnership opportunities and, and uh, the support, but also it gives privileges. And I totally understand why it was like that, because the church was very active in our freedom uh, fight. So it's logical that we have that, but the reality of the, of the population now is changed and we need to start raising questions uh, about the transparency in the institutions, religious institutions, and that's what our organization starts to do. Because before we didn't have ceremonies, we didn't have the authority to talk as well. Because when the priests come, of course, he is authority. And when you come, who are you? You are nothing. Um, and, uh, and I think the expertise in the religious field question is very, very important. Because in many countries, the experts of religion are the clergy of the religion, not the scientists uh, who, who oversees the all um whole field of the religions and, and minorities and, and so on. Um, so in that way, it's not separated at all. Um, we had this, um, because we have these 12 state recognized religions um, and, and they have uh, also some, some uh, 
low privileges and uh, they have this funding each year coming in uh, according to the census. That's why I say the census uh, according to reality is very, very important. But even though you are in census as a non-religious group, only those 12 who are recognized by the state gets the money. Uh, so we had the case of uh, pagan um, religion who wanted to become state recognized because they are working for many years already and, and um, they want to get uh, in this, you know, selected circle. Uh, but before the voting, because it needs to be the voting in the parliament, before the voting, one parliamentarian even said that uh, the, the church uh, confederation is against voting those minority in, this minority in. And uh, that's how democratic vote is happening. Uh, the, the church has, um, still has a very strong saying on what they call moral questions. And um, and atheists don't because we don't have morality, you know. <laughs> and uh, and and the word atheism uh, in Lithuania is like communism. Uh, in many people's minds, it's still equal sign. That's why we call ourselves humanists. Uh, and and atheism is just a scientific term for what we are. But humanism is a term for what we believe and and for what our moral values stands for yeah you're fighting against that soviet era uh system of where it was enforced and as you said there was no freedom so no. yeah so it's a bit of a loaded word so it's more of a branding issue to to say you're a humanist so yeah i can understand that so yeah and this i've, I've seen this in other countries as well uh where they've they've made a big like some of the the local uh, secular and atheist groups have made a big push when the census is out to say, "Hey, your vote, your vote, your voice counts." That when you know what you tick, as you said, in, in other countries applies same in Lithuania. The services, you know, the allocation of of government revenue to certain projects and plans is tied to the demographics. And if you're not standing up to be counted, then you're being left out of. You know, you're an important demographic that's not being recognized. So. I guess in your I, most countries do a census every ten years. I presume maybe the same in Lithuania. So maybe that's your your next project for the next census year. Your organization yeah. will have another ten years of, of experience, and you guys can do a big campaign to to you know you know get out and be counted. So because it is it is important. Sure. So it is, and uh, and and the problem is if it's not united, then one uh, one part of people they put themselves as Jedi, others the, they put themselves as flying spaghetti monster, uh, you know, uh, worshippers. Others put themselves as atheists, as 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 humanists, and then all of them become in the category other, which we don't have any uh, also advocacy possibility uh, at. Yeah. So unification. Yeah, I of what you tick is also very, very much important. I think it was Atheist Ireland. I could be mistaken that they campaigned for the census to, to have the the rights, uh, uh, the, the, the categories on the census, but uh, don't quote me on that. I know I Luxembourg were, uh, also had yeah. very, very successful uh, experience in that. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, well, it's an interesting history um, in Lithuania and Poland. As you mentioned, Poland is very, uh, uh, more, much more conservative. So I was, I was actually reading an interesting book on the history of Christianity that back around 1500s, Lithuania and Poland, like the nobility was during the, after the Protestant Reformation, the nobility uh, had become Protestant and the country was kind of on its way. Both Lithuania and Poland were kind of on the way to becoming um, Protestant. And then the uh, there was like the Habsburgs, some, like, some, somehow somebody died and then the new monarch became like the Habsburgs, I think, who came back in. Who strong yeah. Catholics and you know, the pub, you know the public got yanked back into Catholicism, but it, an mm. interesting tangent, an interesting road that the, the almost went down where the church would have lost its authority in, in Lithuania and Poland. So we, we I didn't the history know. we get. Uh, yeah, I didn't know this fact, uh, uh, but uh, Lithuania was the last pagan country in the whole Europe, and we were holding very, uh, very like uh, to, to till the. 13th century uh, until we took baptism from the Poland. Uh, 
because we needed to choose either to take from Germany, Poland, or, or uh, Russia, uh, because we were pressed by, by all our neighbors uh, to start uh, stop being pagans <laughs> and start to believe a normal god uh, and and yeah we we decided to go with Poland yeah so and it's interesting the point you made about the Catholic Church you know said that you know we don't want these people to to be included so it's you think somebody would have stood up and said well you don't get to claim that you know this is this is a democracy and this is a legitimate group that they could just declare that you know I don't, I, I don't we don't want them to be allowed like that, that nobody I'm surprised nobody pushed back or or was there some pushback but it was fairly quiet. Um, can you clarify your question about which case you are you are talking about? You, sorry, yeah. So you mentioned that uh, when it came time because you said there's twelve groups, so that the the, okay. the the pagans wanted to be included, and then you said the church pushed back and said no. So did did no one push back against the church to say, you don't get to decide? Uh, no. Uh, and uh, the the pagan group themselves, they went to the uh, human rights court and they won it. And the decision is still not made in the parliament. Uh, and they won the human rights court one year ago already, I think even more. Uh, and uh, I was at the discussion three months ago with the, with the parliamentarians and they said yes 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 very fast you will be involved in this category but uh, still to this day they are not and uh, when we were thinking about um, which organization to found uh, we were choosing between NGO and um, because now we are foundation and uh, between religious for example spying spaghetti monster uh, flying spaghetti monster church and we decided to take the NGO approach because I really strongly believe that we all uh, religious and non-religious group, we are just providing services. And the question is how we do it. Either we do it transparently, democratically, either we are accountable to the, to the public we are providing services for, or we are doing it under, under the curtain. And, um, and, Many people don't know that, uh, that, that there is lack of transparency in, in the religious uh, groups because they are allowed not to give in the reports. Uh, according to this religious, religious group law, they, they are allowed to work close, closed, uh, in a closed community uh, in which uh, country doesn't interrupt. And I really liked uh, the... Um, the David Rand uh, thought on uh, that uh, usually secularism uh, is thought about uh, when you protect religions from the country. But who protects country from religions? And uh, we need to think about secularism in both ways. And uh, until we don't do nothing as, as, as humanists, as atheists, um, I think we cannot say that, oh, you don't do, you don't do, you don't do, because you also don't do. Um, of course, I don't talk about this so so um, oppressed countries. I'm talking about Europe. We live in a privileged, uh, free, uh, <laughs> free society. Um, but uh, but yeah, so I think in in our uh, context, the most important thing is to take uh, responsibility and to question the responsibility others take. Yeah, so how, in the country, uh, how is your profile? Are, are you gaining popularity amongst the people? They're finding out about you, or it's basically just people who are who are humanists who seek you out, or are, are you getting mm -hmm. some national attention from, from the media? And or like, like, I'm just curious to know how your, your group is growing. We get uh, media attention as a service providers, for sure. Uh, people are interesting. Why people are married, marrying like this, uh, who are marrying like this, and uh, who gets funeral like, like this, and so on. Um, and, and I think that's all right, because we are working uh, the funeral and, and the wedding. They have brands, and the organization has its own brand is, and is more for advocacy. Uh, and and uh, those brands are more for public. 
So we understand that if we say that uh, um, that it's a service for atheists, nobody will come. Uh, we say that it's meaningful personal service for everyone. And uh, of course, there are people who are humanists, but they don't identify as humanists uh, because there is no, you know, uh, no background for that. When they read the descriptions, they say, oh, I might be, but it's still a very uh, small number. Uh, some of them, they say they are atheists as well. Some of them, they are believers. They are, they are uh, Christians, for example, having the second marriage or wanting to, wanting to sign a prenup because if you sign a prenup, you cannot go to church. Um, really? And uh, yeah, it's like that because uh, of course you go for marriage uh, uh, in, the, in the eyes of God, you go for the marriage for the lifetime. And if you sign a prenup, why you need it? Yeah. Because God, God connects you for a lifetime, so you don't believe in God enough to, because uh, you sign a prenup. Um, yeah, so um, so different different spirituality people uh, uses our services, especially funeral. Um, when we talk about the wedding, uh, then the civil office comes. Uh, in order it to be legal, if we want to be legal. Uh, but in the funeral, some people think that legal part, let's say, is Christian part. Uh, and Christian part is also very short and um, official, let's say. Uh, they have their, uh, their like, um, um, not, uh, they, they have uh, the worship, but it's uh, short and uh, not personalized. So even Christians are lacking this part of uh, personal storytelling uh, and connecting uh, the experience of what was this person and what he is now, he or she is now. And, uh, and yeah, we had a funeral where we started the ceremony. Then the priest did uh, his worshiping part. He went away and we continued the ceremony uh, further. We are not um, strict and limiting, uh, but we don't worship ourselves. We say that, okay, this if, if you want to involve it, it might be clearly from some other person. Uh, but we understand that these services might be needed for, for, for everyone. And I think that religiosity and, and spiritual, spiritual uh, believing in, in a deity is, is a spectrum, you know. And uh, our society now is not uh, not choosing one way or another. Uh, they are doing yoga, they are doing tai chi, they believe in whatever karma, uh, they go to church, uh, they, they do some pagan rituals, and it all fits in one person and in one life. And... Um, I think that by doing like humanist services, we say to people that, look, it's also a possible way to celebrate uh, and, and science-based uh, and, and human rights-based way to celebrate. Um, yeah, so I think that, of course, there is a, a huge gap uh, which are expanding in the in the Europe in secular field uh, because people are becoming more science uh, science approach um, driven but they still need uh, meaning and uh, finding meaning alone can be hard yeah and have other groups around Europe uh, or, or even globally, other humanist groups, have they come to you guys for help in, in some of these humanist ceremonies? Or is just basically you're just focused on Lithuania? No, we, we start to partner with uh, with another, another countries because um, as we started only five years ago and, and we have a professional uh, artist uh, working with us, we have a very creative and uh, and and how to say, new approach uh, to, to this ceremony system. Um, and uh, yeah, we have we have consultancy and uh, I really want to inspire more 
NGOs uh, working for, for human rights, working for critical thinking, working for humanist and, and atheist uh, values um, to do social enterprises in whatever what, sell t-shirts, sell books, uh, sell something uh, uh, out of the box, uh, but uh, do something because that will be your source of income when the government uh, shuts, shuts you down or, or something like that. Uh, selling subscriptions to your members also, it's a, it's a perfect social entrepreneurship model. But uh, we need to make sure that we have the income to survive and to do our job uh, and to, to, to speak. And uh, um, I see so many NGOs who are super nice, but they are uh, lacking this, uh, you know, um, approach uh, where they are strong on their feet. Uh, and they wait from project to project uh, and they get uh, overwhelmed by this and they die out, die out. So I wish everyone to, um, yeah, to, to, to look into social entrepreneurship and, and find a way to make uh, extra income for, for your organization. Uh, we will be in in the Humanist Congress this year talking about this uh, the social entrepreneurship approach because I see also that many organizations are doing things and they are super cool. So uh, I would like to connect and to take from each other and and use our services and products as our uh, organization funding model. And, and I think we could, we could use each other resources and strengthen the international community so much more than we do now. Excellent. That's good to hear that you're working towards it. I think, I think you're right. It's something that's each group sort of works independently and there's a lot of talent out there that, you know, maybe you're really good at social enterprise but someone else is maybe very good in other ways, maybe in, in um, uh, political campaigning. So yeah, we should, to work yeah. together to, to leverage the strengths of, of each organization and its members. So it's an excellent idea. Mm. So. Actually, I have to give credit for Humanist International in that because this organization, we are members of it and it led us to, to connect to, to another people. Uh, they have now a focus uh, also on, on sharing the expertise and sharing the, um, yeah, the knowledge uh, in the organization. So I think that's, that's the important thing they do. Yeah, yeah, I know. On the with a lot of uh, atheist refugees, a lot of the like Humanist International, AAI, um, like there's some other ones as well. They all they all tend. To, or I know there was in the past some some communication between these groups to work together. So yeah, I think it's it's definitely something we need to to work together. I mean, there's as I said, there's strength in numbers. So. Okay, and we will uh, we will put the link to your organization in the description uh, so people can check it out. Is, is it available in English as well, or it's just in the, the local language? Uh, yeah, sadly, it's in a local language. Um, Google Translate uh, do the job, uh, I hope. Okay. Okay. <laughs> but uh, yeah, maybe because we don't have this uh, strong uh, foreign uh, foreign approach yet. We, we are right. mostly connecting through another people, through Humanist International, through some conferences. Uh, but it's not, you know, uh, the strong field of our work yet. Okay. No, Google Translate works well on, on European languages, on the Asian languages, not so much. So hopefully it works works okay there. Yeah. So, yeah. Okay. Well, we'll put the link in and people can check it out. So, okay. So thank you, Urte. It was great to have you on. And I really appreciate uh, you sharing your vision of what you're trying to build. It's, it's truly inspiring. So, um, so thank you for your efforts and thank you for coming on today. Thank you. Have a good day. Okay. Yeah. All right. Just like to remind everyone to please like and subscribe, and we will see everybody on the next episode. All right. Take care, everybody. Bye bye. Okay, thanks for listening and don't forget we're on YouTube, so follow us on YouTube, just search for Atheist Alliance International and please subscribe and hit that notification bell. We're also on all of your favourite podcast platforms, so make sure that you follow us on there as well. See you next time.